السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters A question that many people ask is I want to turn to Allah I want to repent I want to seek forgiveness I want to change my life How do I do that? Where do I begin? The answer is not complicated. Allah is your Lord and mine. Allah made you, He made me. Allah Almighty does not require an occasion for you to turn. So we don't have to wait for that occasion. We don't have to wait for a place or a time. We have to turn to Allah here and now. That's what it is. You ask Allah right here and I ask Allah right now, O oh Allah, you are my Lord. You made me, you know me. I'm on your covenant to the best of my ability. I'm trying my best. I have erred, I have faltered. Forgive me. I want to change my life. Grant me goodness, strengthen me. Forgive my shortcomings, the sins I did that I know. And you bear them in mind. And the sins that I did that I don't even know, Allah, forgive me. Besides you, I have no Lord. You are the one who made me. I'm at your mercy, O oh Allah. Grant me a new beginning. Be pleased with me. Make it easy for me to fulfill that which is pleasing to you. Make it difficult for me to do that which is displeasing to you. Create a barrier between myself and sin. And encourage me and strengthen me when it comes to doing the right thing, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, I ask you to make me strong that I can have a circle of people around me who will always be doing good so that I do good with them. O oh Allah, protect me from being in the company of those who do bad so I slide into bad with them. So we ask Allah, talk to Allah, speak to Him, seek His forgiveness at any time and every time. Seek it as many times as you want. The first time you ask Allah for forgiveness from a major sin that you have committed, if you have done it sincerely, you regret it, and you ask Allah's forgiveness and you promise Him you're not going to do it again, do you know? He wipes it out the first time you asked Him. It's wiped out. Then shaitan comes to you and makes you think, no, you're not forgiven. Not you. You're not forgiven. Don't let that happen. You repeat the repentance. Yes. You ask Allah again, not because you are doubting the mercy of Allah, but because you're embarrassed that you sinned in front of the Lord of the worlds. Subhanallah. You sinned in front of the creation of the entire creation. So you repeat it because of that feeling. We are ashamed. And also you repeat it because we have learned from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that repetition of the seeking of forgiveness elevates your status. You want a high status, don't you? When you seek Allah's forgiveness again, he becomes happy that you're not, you're not doubting him. You know you are already forgiven for the major sin you committed. But your commitment to him is such that you understand his mercy. Oh Allah, forgive me. You know, you see someone and uh, you did something bad to them. This is a different example, but just to bring it closer to understanding. And then you say, brother, I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed. Please forgive me. I really feel bad. He says, no, no, don't worry. It's okay. Forgiven. It's okay. When you see him again, you smile again. You say, brother, forgive me, man. You know, I he, he might tell you, you know what? Don't mention it. You see him after some time. You might say the third, third. But he already told you the first time. Hey, listen, it's over. You're repeating it because you love him. Or you really want to mend the relationship. You really want things to go right. My brothers, my sisters, there is no particular time, like I said, that you must wait for because you might die before that time. So if you say, I'm going to repent on Friday, You'll die on Thursday maybe. I will repent when I go for Hajj. You may never make Hajj. I will repent when this happens or I will do this and that. That may never come. It may never happen. So don't wait for a time or a place or a season. But if the time or the place or the season comes, you should be embarrassed if you have not yet repented. So you're going for Hajj and you still didn't turn. How could that be? 
People say, I'm going for Hajj, I will seek the forgiveness of Allah. No, 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 that's the wrong statement. I have sought the forgiveness of Allah, I'm going to go for Hajj and I will reiterate that I have repented to Allah. And I'm going to seek forgiveness again, not because I'm doubting the forgiveness of Allah, but because it's a blessed place, a blessed moment. Allah loves it when you cry to Him and say, Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. Look at the Quran. Allah Almighty makes mention of Adam alayhi salam. He does not say, Adam alayhi salam said it so many times, forgive me. He said it once, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Beautiful statement from the heart. Oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. What we did was wrong. That's what Adam alayhi salam is saying. And if you don't have mercy on us, and if you don't forgive us, we are the losers. My brothers, my sisters, if Allah doesn't forgive you and I, who is at a loss? The Lord of the worlds or you and I? <laughs> Subhanallah, I'm at a loss, you're at a loss. So tell Allah, oh Allah, I have no Lord besides you. No one can forgive me but you, oh Allah. And if you have wronged a fellow human being, go and make peace with that person. You have done something wrong. You maybe spoke in a way that hurt their feelings. You might have done whatever. At times people say, you know, when I was little, I pinched this and I did that. I want to make peace. Go and make peace. Don't be embarrassed. Go and make peace. It's better to be feeling that feeling of belittlement in, the, in this world than to feel that feeling later on. I'd rather come to you and say, brother, I spoke a lot of rubbish about you. Please forgive me because I fear the day I'm going to stand in front of my Lord giving account for my deeds. Forgive me. He may say yes, he may say no. If he says yes, you're sorted. Mashallah. If he says no, you can do better, inshallah. Masha, you can ask Allah to soften his heart. You can seek forgiveness for yourself, for the brother, whatever else it may be. You can do a lot, but did you try? Did you go and seek forgiveness? Because I tell you on the day of judgment, things we thought were small will be very big, both good and bad. Sometimes you do a good deed that is small. It is so huge in the scale that you will be so impressed and so thankful to Allah, but the opposite is true. Sometimes you say something light and it is so bad in the eyes of Allah. You think that it is something light, but in the eyes of Allah, it is very serious. Especially in this particular verse of the Quran, accusing someone of immorality who is not even immoral. Accusing someone of infidelity when they, that is not the case. We think, you know what, this guy here, well, he's having an affair with so and so. That statement might have taken you a split second to say. But do you know what? The hadith says if you were to drop it, similar statements, if you were to drop it in droplet form into the ocean, it would change the color of the whole ocean. That's how serious it is in the eyes of Allah. So make peace with people, seek their forgiveness. Don't be embarrassed because. You will save yourself the embarrassment of the day of judgment. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. So getting back to the question, if someone were to ask, I want to turn to Allah, I want to repent. Where do I begin? What do I do? The answer is here and now say, Oh Allah, I, I'm ashamed of what I did. Forgive me, grant me goodness. Forgive my shortcomings. I promise you I won't do it again. Strengthen me so that I can fulfill this promise of mine unto you that I won't do it again. Let's listen to something known as Sayyidul Istighfar. The master or the leader of all forms of, or should I say, of all wordings when it comes to seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. There is none worthy of worship besides you. You made me. Allah made us, subhanallah, where were we before the date of our birth, for example, wherever Allah wanted us to be, man is so sophisticated, so complicated, yet without revelation, he would never know where he's going after he dies, he wouldn't know, you need revelation, it's Allah, your maker, the one who made entire creation. لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني none worthy of worship besides you you made me وأنا عبدك I am your slave I am your slave you know to use the word slave if it is for mankind it is derogatory if it is for Allah it is an act of worship look at the most beloved names unto Allah according to the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says 
Ahabbul Asma'i Lallahi Abdullahi wa Abdul Rahman. The most loved names unto Allah, Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, the slave of Allah and the slave of the most merciful. Slave. In human, for human beings, it's an insult. For Allah, it's an act of worship. I am a slave of Allah. Ana abduk. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. I am upon the covenant and upon the promise that I have made to you of iman to the best of my ability. What is the covenant? To begin with, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Is that not a covenant? Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Is that not a covenant? Let's look at the first part of it, which is of prime importance. I bear witness there is none worthy of what? Worthy of what? I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Do you really bear that witness? Don't you render acts of worship to others here and there? May Allah protect us. It's called shirk. Allah says that is the biggest sin one could commit. So that's the covenant unto Allah. Oh Allah, I will not commit shirk. That's the meaning of ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Oh Allah, I will not worship anyone but you because there is none worthy of any act of worship besides you. That's the meaning. So this is the covenant. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. A'udhu bika min kulli sharri ma sana'atu. I seek refuge in you from all the bad that I have done. Wow, look at how we are asking Allah's forgiveness. Initially, we're declaring the greatness of Allah. How helpless we are, how Allah is the maker, how there is none worthy of worship but Him, how we are the slaves of Allah. Then we say, A'udhu bika min kulli sharri ma sanatu. I seek your refuge, I seek refuge in you from all the bad that I have done. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya. I acknowledge, I admit. The gifts upon myself that you have favored me with. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya. Allah has favored us with too much, too much. More than we deserve in actual fact. I've said it before that if you were to count the favors of Allah, you won't be able to count them. There are too many. And if you were to count the challenges that Allah put in your lives and the difficulties, you can count them. Because why? There are just a few. I ask you, brother, how many problems do you have? You'll mention five. Or if you really have a big disaster, you might mention 10. <laughs> what else? The rest of it, you forgot. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alay. Wa abu ubithambi. Oh Allah, I admit, I acknowledge my sin. You, have, you acknowledge, I did this, I did this, I did this. It's between you and me. If Allah has... If Allah has not exposed you while you were sinning, chances are He is not going to expose you when you are seeking forgiveness. Man is such that when you seek forgiveness, He will remind you 10 years later, you know, you did this, you did this, you did this, and you're embarrassed. But brother, didn't we make peace? No, but I'm just reminding you, you see, that's man. Allah says, we wipe it out, we will make the angels forget it. It's no longer in the book. And if you are fortunate and you did a lot of good thereafter, it will be converted into good on the right side of the scale. Like Allah says in the Quran, I'm sure we know that that happens. Converted. Yubaddilullahu sayyatihim hasanat. You come on the day of judgment, no even mention of the bad. Because why? The mercy of Allah. Allah says the one who sought forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to the one who did not commit the sin. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the mercy of Allah. So what are we saying here? Abu bidambi faghfirli. Oh Allah, I admit my sins. So forgive me. Forgive me. Because there is none to forgive the sins besides you, O oh Allah. That is known as Sayyidul Istighfar. Brothers and sisters, memorize it. Repeat it on a daily basis with a heart. Sometimes we recite from a book, the Arabic, without really knowing what you're exactly saying, but it's powerful. What you're saying, O oh Allah, you are my Lord, I'm your slave. Here I am admitting you made me. And so on. I've wronged myself. Forgive me. I admit and so on. MashaAllah. That is known as seeking the forgiveness of Allah. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, life is very short. Very short. You know, we used to say, here today, and what about tomorrow? Gone tomorrow. It's no longer like that. Here today, gone later the same day. That's how it is. How many have we heard there with us? And suddenly, whoa, what happened? I don't know, sudden, Allahu Akbar. 
it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen to you. How do you prepare? It's a little bit scary. But when you have Iman, it's not scary. It's reassuring. Oh Allah, take me when you're happy with me. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Oh Allah, keep me alive for as long as you know that life is good for me. Take me away when you know that it's better for me to go. Can you make that dua? May Allah make it easy for us. What will happen to everything that you leave behind after you're gone? Well, I tell you, better things than those that happened while you were around, perhaps. May Allah grant us goodness. So my brothers, my sisters, we have no guarantee. Turn to Allah. If you would like to prepare for death, one of the best ways is seek the forgiveness of Allah. And together with that, change your life. You must be strong. And every time you falter, come back. Don't let anyone make you think, you know, you sought forgiveness, you fell. You sought forgiveness, you fell. You sought forgiveness, you fell. You are running a race, my brothers, my sisters. The idea is to finish that race. Even if you fell 20 times in the process, you got up again, walked. You got up again, walked. One day you will cross that finish line and Allah will be pleased with you. Why? Because you continue to turn to Allah. According to one narration, Allah Almighty boasting, to the angels saying, you see this worshiper of mine con constantly seeking forgiveness, falling back into it unplanned. Seeking forgiveness, falling back into it unplanned. Seeking forgiveness, I want you to bear witness that he believes he has a Lord who can punish him or forgive him. So I'm forgiving him. That's Allah. The mercy. The mercy of Allah is a topic on its own. May Allah Almighty grant us true forgiveness. May he help us to prepare for the day, the best of days, the day when we meet him. When we meet him, may he not embarrass us. May Allah Almighty gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. May he increase the love in our hearts. May Allah Almighty bless every one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.